how are you i'm good i'm good how are you very well thank you congratulations first of all your book is right round the corner and we're going to get to read it very soon i'm terrified of that prospect <laughs> <laughs> but i i'm sure it's just going to be as amazing as all other things that you do and i'm not i'm trying to patronize you here but it is what it is i mean i do work very hard to make sure everything that i do is at a certain level of excellence i expect from myself right which is why this book took like 3 years but i actually uh-huh. just wrote it in quarantine you know um i was home for 6 months and i had my feet on the ground and it gave me the ability to sort of really look back i didn't have a lot of memories i realized um when i went to start writing the book because you know mm-hmm. for the last 20 years i've been running so fast you know from pillar to post what's the next thing that i'm doing right. my job is not one of consistency as you know you know it's right. always like what's the next thing what's i don't know thing? where yeah you don't know where the checks coming from next you don't know mm-hmm. where where you're going to go So I just spent so much time on you know what was the next thing that I didn't remember a lot of it. So I had to really work hard on writing down all the milestones of my life then the ones that I remembered at least and then yeah. calling the people who were in those memories like my mom or my brother or my friends or my cousins and be like yeah kya hua tha is time do you remember this like that and then I started building yeah and then I started building and eventually like it just became like a diary it just flew out of me there were so many things that like i've never talked about i probably will never talk about that i've mentioned in the book there are a lot that i've taken out as well because i was like book thoda zyada ho gaya um but you know it was a very cathartic experience because i i let it be personal it, it was it would have been very easy to write a book about you know my achievements and my laurels but nice. this is a book about the opposite of that it's the book about my failures it's the book about my sadnesses it's the book about you know my struggles and um so it's it's very surprising to me as well that it turned out the way it did you know i'm very curious so the very first time i got to know that lanka chopra writing a book I, i was like why right now because there is so much you've achieved but being who you are there is so much more to achieve as well What made you decide at this stage of your life that you know I want to write it now and not later? Well, hence it's called unfinished. So it's self-explanatory that you know it, this is not like a book to sort of commemorate everything I've done. Right. I just was at a place in life where you know I'd been in the business for twenty years and I right. wanted to be reflective and I wanted to be spiritual and I wanted to be. Um, And I also think I now on the other side of 35, you know, I've reached a point where I found a lot of confidence and I'm very self-assured as a woman um in my place in the world, in my place personally, professionally. You know, I don't have the insecurities I did when I was younger. I don't have the stresses I did when I was younger. So it was a lot more easier and more cathartic for me actually to do it at, at this time. I think I was just personally ready to deal with everything that had happened in you know my life so far and it was just a very natural organic thing there was no like agenda or planning i've always been a writer i've written many op-eds um i've written for ma- newspapers magazines um you know but i've never done structured writing like a novel or a screenplay or a book so i was very terrified of that i always wanted to do it and when i signed on with penguin um you know my <laughs> my um publisher uh my editor Pam Cannon I remember sitting with her and talking about what kind of book this would be because it was about me writing and uh, it was supposed to be you know letters to my younger self that's still the tone of the book mm-hmm. it's like me in my head about talking to sort of me right um as I've grown up but it's just a lot more in depth you know You know what like you said that you had to relive all your moments um you know during this whole process there may have been self revelations and introspections as well is there anything about your personality that has changed while writing this book or anything that you will now do differently because you understand yourself in a very different light yes i do think the one thing that really helped me through um through the process of writing this book and i'm 
it's a really good question was it made me a little bit more confident in myself in my decision making abilities it allowed me to pat myself on the back and say you know you got through a lot of shit yeah. and you made it on the other side you know i never thought about that i, I never dealt with the good and the bad that happened to me i never i just kept running you know my i was always at the next destination that's just my nature it's who i've been and i'm climbing a ladder i don't stop at a rung i'm just like always on the next thing but this book gave me the ability to say okay this is what you've done this is who you've become today now we have to see the woman you're going to be you know so it's sort of like it helped me adjust myself in a balanced way to look forward to the next chapter of my life you know the world knows a certain image of a priyanka chopra do you think when young ambitious women are going to read this are they going to take away a different picture of you or is there a message that you're going to try to subtly say through this book tell us a little about that it's really just reflections for my younger self and i hope that i don't have any message i'm not some you know world leader that you know i should have a message to my book i'm just a girl talking about where i am and how i got there because i know there's a lot of curiosity around my story and uh, my story has been spoken by and written by a lot of people but no one really knows what went on in it except me and my loved ones right. so this was sort of my version of version of reflecting on my own story um but i do hope like for the people who know me who have known me for almost 20 years i hope that they read this book and get to know me a little bit more than you know the newspaper articles or the instagram stories that they read about me or a little bit more than the conversation they have at dinner about me i hope they get to know me as a girl as a human being and see that i also have feelings and i also get into pit places where i have to pull myself out of them and for the people who don't know me very well and make them across this book i hope that you know there is a takeaway that is that i come from a very non assuming middle class small town background and if i can have built myself a solid career which is self made on my own you know merit then anyone man woman child should be able to dream big and achieve it you know whatever your version of that is my version was this so i hope like these two things come out of the book but it's really not about you know i'm not trying to give a message to the world or this is it's not that it's more like my own letters to myself my thoughts i have a personal question you know this is something that i always wanted to ask priyanka chopra when i speak to her but you know you're one of those very few female actors who achieved so much on a global platform but still whenever i've seen any of your interviews read a piece about you i always observe that there is still this hunger to learn hunger to become a better human being hunger to hone that craft after 20 years how do you manage to do that and still cut the noise out and keep doing the good work that you're doing that amazing stuff I think it's it's about recognizing that you know when you become a public person like I've been a public person now more than half my life right it's a normal to me I don't know life outside of it okay. as of now so then you start recognizing that that's not real the noise and the hype and the excitement and the euphoria the popularity that's not what is reality what builds you and what is the long game you know and i'm someone who plays the long game i don't play the short game and if you want a long game if you want a legacy i think it's really important to focus on what you're doing you know i can talk a big talk i can you know look fabulous i can be with chaka chon jo hoti hai i can be very shiny and bright that's easy what's hard is to consistently be able to be good at your job and i that's all i focus on because i you know i come from a science background because um, i was i wanted to be an engineer and stuff and i was doing pcm and it's it's like a it's like a physics formula to me if you want to be excellent at the end of your life right if that's the end game that i want my work to be excellent then every single day has to be excellent 
बिकॉज यू डोंट इवन हैव टू मेक अ बिग प्लान यू डोंट इवन हैव टू थिंक कि फाइव इयर्स लेटर मुझे ये गाड़ी चाहिए या ये बंगला चाहिए या ये जॉब चाहिए यू डोंट हैव टू थिंक अबाउट इट यू जस्ट हैव टू थिंक अबाउट टूडे द टास्क एट हैंड इफ आई डू हंड्रेड परसेंट और अगर मुझे ए मिलेगा तो फिर इतने सारे हंड्रेड परसेंट कलेक्ट करके आपकी लाइफ हैज टू बी कलेक्टिवली एक्सलेंट एंड एंड दैट्स ऑल आई हैव फोकस्ड ऑन बिकॉज अदरवाइज इट्स सो ईजी टू गेट स्टक इन दिस रैट रेस ऑफ you know how many people are talking about me or how yeah. many people are like me and i don't care if you like me or not i'm not a head of state i'm not a policy maker i care if you like my work and that's all that matters to me you know you mentioned that you had to relive a lot of memories and reliving things is never the easiest thing and you know there are challenges there it is not i mean to go back to everything good bad ugly is not the easiest thing what was that process like what were the challenges how did you overcome because you know one side you're writing the book one side you're rewinding your life what was that process like i mean there were a lot of times where it was hard to write because i was thinking faster than i was writing i don't know how to type very quickly so mai but slow typer un thodi si so i had to like you know write it down with a pen and paper and i couldn't keep up with my thoughts so i started recording my thoughts um especially because i was right my book is ba- like it's very linear it's from when i was born to who i am today and it takes you through you know 11 chapters of my life and um each one has its own tone and each one takes you into a different phase of my life and i think that i was i was very true to how i was thinking and when you see the reading as well and if you know me you'll know that that's how i speak like i have a lot of commas i have a lot of dashes i have a lot of explanations because that's how i think so when i was writing i was recording and just saying whatever i'm thinking and my sentences are sort of structured like that but um that, that's what it took and then every time i would talk about it i know that you know after i, I would finish my writing thing i would be at dinner with my family or my friends you know i would talk about that evening would be spent on talking about what i wrote <laughs> Yeah so it, it used to become very real You know uh, you were very close to your mother you you've been close to your father and your brothers how how was their involvement i mean your mums and your brothers in this book did you seek help support some sort of a so know, much should, yeah i told you i don't remember a lot right so like i lived with my family but i lived a lot with my cousins and stuff in america when i was younger So I had to call them. My mother has read the manuscript five times now because you know she's mentioned in it a lot. So everyone who's in the book, like big big chapters, they've all read the book um, multiple times. I needed their input. I needed their version of the stories because it was very funny. My version of the stories and my, the people who were in the story, their version of the story was completely <laughs> different. And I was like, oh, this was my thirteen-year-old mind that thought that this happened, but actually that happened. It, and so you see the book also from the perspective of how i remembered certain things you know um but yeah my my mom and my brother had to read it multiple times my brother is a big big part of the book as well because he kick started my career um so yeah they were any childhood memory that stays special which is mentioned in the book that you can talk about um me trying to copy my dad when i was 3 years old or 2 years old i used to walk around the house you know my dad was 63 and he was in the military so he used to come back in his uniform and i used to wear his uniform even though you know like my feet my legs were this small um and it would like you know puddle over me i used to copy him full day even when he was in the toilet i would go with him he would be shaving i would shave with him i have a scar also from Did you try shaving <laughs> I got eight Ouch. stitches. Ouch! Because I tried to shave like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow! But what's you know? Every time we think, okay, you've achieved something. There's always something new that comes. There's a new surprise. There's white tiger, obviously, that's coming. But what's on the bucket list? Like I know you've mentioned in one of your interviews that you know the book just happened. It was on the bucket list, but it happened very organically. What next? Like what is it? How do you see your next couple of years happening? I, you know, I have to say, Kamna, like for me, it's not. Um, I don't make a long plan. I told you, right? My daily, everyday excellence, wala philosophy. 
um but that's how i function but at the same time i think growth has been my consistent evolution like my consistent um uh, ambition i don't want to rest on my laurels i don't want to be satisfied with where i am there's always room for improvement you've heard that phrase right there's always room for improvement and i want my trajectory to be up and for it to be up i can't be like oh ab to mujhe sab kuch maloom hai or oh god now i know you know you've got to like you've got to find things that you're you're doing for the first time like yeah. the white tiger for me is one of my first big you know executive producer roles in america in hollywood i have i just i just had evil eye and now this is my second like really big one and then i have a bunch of others coming up some that star me some that don't and that's a really exciting new phase in my life um of being able to create content which i did with purple pebble pictures in india as well i didn't you know do what was normal which was do big bollywood movies i did regional films i did small films i betted on new filmmakers um i had most of my filmmakers were first time filmmakers you know i've i've always been someone who wants to promote creating opportunity and make a larger table because i didn't have that when i you know joined um i had help and support from people but creating opportunities was something that i really had to dig into and i'm still now i've learned how to do it so i'm i do it in a much better way but um i think it should be easier you know for people who look like us to be represented in or to have opportunities in especially american or hollywood or western entertainment we are one fifth of the world's population but do you yeah. see one fifth of global entertainment looking like us now my last question which i know a lot of people will ask you but oh my <laughs> in the course of this journey when you look back are there any regrets anything that you would do differently now if you had to redo it i don't know if i would do it differently but i regret things i regret being like impulsive i regret being um busy i regret being but i don't have large regrets which i feel like i wish i had done that my life would have been better i wouldn't change my life for anything in the world and the good the bad and the ugly have really made me the person i am and i'm kind of like proud of who i have become now you know i try to live on the uh, on the right side of goodness i always try to achieve trying to be a better person every day i wake up you know or to do better work strive to be better and i think that within that i don't have large regrets but smaller smaller things i wish i had finished school you know i come from a very academic family and um maybe going to college and doing that whole thing it's not a regret but it's a cha you know ki, oh it would have been fun to it would have been fun to skip classes and you know bunk classes and go out with friends and i never did any of that <laughs> so much priyanka it was lovely talking to you and i hope next time you're in bombay we can work together something on l in a longer way i really I would love that to meet you. thank I you so really much and good luck with everything kamna thank you and good luck and i really look forward to hearing a lot more fantastic things that you do <laughs> thank All you right. thanks guys thanks everyone else who was on the call <laughs>